Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, distinguished uh, conference, uh, and thank you for all here. Uh, I'm Dr. Wahyu Animidianingsi from Jakarta, uh, Indonesia. Uh, I will talk about endobronchial tuberculosis, especially in TB stenosis, uh, in main airways. Uh, Indonesia, as all we know, that uh, still have high cases of uh, the uh, tuberculosis. So uh, it's number second in the world right now. And we do know that central airway stenosis, if not treated uh, carefully and very, very promptly, it will cause uh, a lot of morbidity and mortality. And surely, it will take a multidisciplinary approach, either in uh, interventional pulmonologists, anesthesiologists who, is, who will be in the team, a thoracic surgeon, a radiologist, and all the nurses who are capable to uh, help us in the intervention. Endobronchial tuberculosis, uh, it's tuberculosis which affect the tracheobronchial tree, and it percent also in 10 until 12 percent in patients with normal chest X-ray, and active pulmonary tuberculosis it's seen about 10 to 40 percent of uh, active pulmonary tuberculosis. Uh, we don't know yet why, but uh, more uh, uh, the most of the patient uh, that we found encounter in our daily practices is young female. So endobronchial TB can cause complications such as tracheobronchostenosis uh, if whether if we give uh, anti-tuberculosis treatment, but it still will cause uh, some problems such as stenosis. And it, it's just Dr. Jamsak said that it can mistaken and dele delayed uh, diagnosis due to unspecific symptoms such as asthma. So it still can develop uh, also after the anti-tuberculosis is complete, uh, uh, we given them. Uh, we gave uh, anti-tuberculosis treatment in Indonesia for the endobronchial TB cases. We treat them as uh, uh, extra pulmonary tuberculosis, so minimum 12 months. So the pathogenesis is uh, the same as Dr. Jamsak says, and, and predilection, uh, we don't know why it's uh, uh, most affected uh, subjects is young female. So it's hepatized that uh, uh, women do not expect to red sputum, possibly of their uh, sociocultural factors. So it's classification uh, with uh, in that was published in Chess in 2000, Chung classification. So until now, corticosteroids still controversies. So in, in children, we can give them uh, and. It can reduce the bronchial obstruction to higher lymph uh, lymphadenopathy, but not in adults. And it could not reverse the fibrosis. Why? Such in, uh, like in asthma and COPD, we observe also uh, remodeling in tuberculosis. But remodeling in tuberculosis uh, is an inappropriate response to lung injury, such as residual cavitation, fibrosis, cicatrix, uh, loss of normal lung architectures that will alter the uh, extensive uh, fibrosis include airway fibrosis leading to airway stenosis. It's hypothesized also in the uh, Journal of Infectious Disease. It's because the failed TH1 mediated immunity and cause TH2 like uh, immunity. So uh, the role of uh, giving the anti-inflammatory drugs is still ongoing research. I will give, uh, uh, because this is case-based uh, illustration, I will give uh, uh, some cases in, that was uh, found in our practice. This is a simple uh, central area obstruction 
female, 60 years old, post tuberculosis treatment, who has dyspnea, strider, and impending respiratory failure. We see this uh, in this patient. We have pinpoint uh, stenosis due to tuberculosis in mid trachea because it's only uh, less than one centimeter. So we can dilate with the rigid scope and we put stand afterwards. And uh, after three or six months, we put out the stand and the lumen was achieved uh, normally. This is a long, complicated uh, stenosis. Uh, the patient was com uh, complaining of short of breathness after the uh, start of the tuberculosis treatment. And in CT scan, we can see there's a long, complicated uh, stenosis. So in this patient, we see a very complicated stenosis. Patient has strider, uh, very, uh, sometimes cyanotic, uh, and uh, bronchoscopy pre-intervention. We found uh, stenosis just below the focal cord and uh, down along to the carina and the right main bronchus. You see there is a tumorous like also in the one, two centimeters above the carina and in front of the right main bronchus. So this is uh, after post dilatation. The patient underwent several dilatation with rigid scope. Uh, 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 with a uh, time sparse uh, is two weeks and afterwards oh, one month, three months, and six months. This is also the long complicated airway stenosis. The patient uh, had suffered uh, cyanosis, strider, uh, and dyspnea. The, we can see there's a scassiatus uh, lesion in this patient, long of the trachea down to the carina. And we do the uh, rigid uh, dilatation, uh, uh, starting from the uh, most smaller, uh, smallest di diameter of the rigid scope, and then uh, to the larger diameter of the rigid bronchoscopes. This is another story of the complicated long airway stenosis. The patient female. Uh, again, 24 years old, who, has, who had a uh, worsening dyspnea. Uh, she had been treated uh, anti-tuberculosis drug for four months. Here, uh, after four months, the lesion in the chest x-ray is uh, better, but the patient complains uh, more and more breathlessness. In the CT, uh, there is a, uh, we see complicated uh, stenosis, and then we try to do uh, intervention with bronchoscopic uh, procedures, but we failed because of the, the stiffness of the trachea. And then with uh, our colleague uh, of thoracic surgeon, we do tracheoplasty, uh, and the tracheal uh, wall is incised, and then being covered by pericardial patch, and then uh, we put a st the silastic stand inside the pericardial patch. But because of the patient just uh, uh, started uh, about four months uh, sten uh, anti-tuberculosis drugs, it, the stenosis ray occurred. S although we do a lot of uh, interventions such as methamycin application, uh, uh, injection of corticosteroid intralation, the patient keep and uh, keep worsening and keeping keep getting worse, and the patient died. This is uh, the case number. Uh, the, the the next case, the patient who's is it? This is a male, uh, 50 years old with worsening dyspnea, and we see there is a mass mediastinal mass, and in bronchoscopic. Uh, uh, this bronchoscopic, um, the movie is not moving. Uh, we, do, we found uh, a mass obstructing the distal uh, trachea. The frozen, the frozen section uh, said that it was uh, TB, 
and, and then we put a Y stand. This is the uh, bronchoscopic appearance after the Y stand placement. This is a TB stenosis male, 29 years old, who has uh, referred from other city to our hospital. This is, uh, he had very, very severe dip dyspnea, and we found a pinpoint uh, stenosis uh, just uh, two centimeters below the focal cords. And we do balloon dilatation, and uh, we continue with the bronchoscopic rigid dilatation, uh, starting with the smallest one, and then we continue to larger uh, bronchoscopic tubes. And then uh, after the second intervention and last observation, the patient had no symptoms, and he uh, didn't complain any dyspnea, and the quality of life is very good. Uh, I forgot to mention, in all of the patients, uh, most, uh, most of them, we give, besides anti-tuberculosis treatment, we also give them uh, Labax, uh, inhaled Labax, to reduce the inflammation. This is uh, uh, our ward for MDR tuberculosis or XDR tuberculosis patient. This is how we do bronchoscopy in patients with MDR and XDR uh, tuberculosis. So we have also the patient with uh, TB stenosis in MDR TB patient. We do balloon dilatation and same uh, the, with the rigid scope uh, dilatation, buccination, and then uh, the patient was given uh, MDR TB drugs, and now the patient, and also Labax, so, and the patient uh, uh, outcome is uh, quite good. So this is the tracheal TB patient, female, 25 years old, endobronchial TB. After uh, completed treatment, there is a collapse in the right lung. But uh, in the bronchoscopy, there is a, a, a little hole in the uh, uh, right main bronchus, and uh, the thoracic surgeon did a bronchoplasty with the pericardial patch, and it is, uh, the patient was good condition. The lung expanded uh, until now, the, uh, and we were very happy for this patient. This uh, are some of the patients with uh, surgical repair, uh, repair tracheobronchial TB cases with stand supported patch uh, or only uh, pericardial patch. What will happen with the patch if we remove the supporting patch? This is how uh, it looks, uh, the bronchoscopic appearance after two years uh, removal of the stands. Sometimes uh, we didn't do anything. If we don't see a hole or uh, any uh, uh, more distant airway uh, after the stenosis, we didn't do anything uh, because it will give the patient more risk to do uh, procedures uh, besides to do nothing. So this is also the patient, 20 years old. She came after a six month uh, tuberculosis treatment and she had a collapse, full collapse of the uh, right lungs. And then uh, in bronchoscopy, we, we, uh, bronchoscopy, we do not, see, we didn't see any hole in the right main bronchus. It, it complete, completely obstructed, so we did, did not do anything for this patient. This is a tumorous-like tuberculosis. The patient was uh, treated uh, because of uh, hemoptysis at first, and after uh, two months, uh, she complained of uh, breathlessness. And when we see this uh, CT scan, we see a mass uh, in the uh, intermediate, uh, truncus intermediate, uh, and this is the bronchoscopic appearance. Uh, it looks like that it is uh, lymph nodes uh, uh, getting in the, in the airway. So we did do not do uh, we didn't do anything for this patient. We just uh, continue the anti tuberculosis treatment uh, along with Labax, 
and the patient was uh, it was resolved, uh, and then uh, the result is quite good. So in the bronchial TB treat, uh, uh, the bronchial TB leading track uh, bronchial stenosis is a complex problem. The question remains that should we do a bronchoscopy as routine procedure for all pulmonary tuberculosis or not? Uh, the role of a corticosteroid and should we do, how long we do uh, follow-up bronchoscopy in this patient, still we uh, need to do more research on this and of course a guideline is needed. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wajo. It was a very good uh, case-based learning, IP. Uh, I could see that you did a good job in most of the cases which you presented us here. My question is, uh, you are here since yesterday and you must have also seen the international pulmonology happening in India and uh, how you think, uh, how it's uh, different and uh, what do you think the difference in uh, Indonesia, what you do across in the IP for the post-tuberculosis cases and here, do you, you, may, you see any differences? What do you, they do here and what do you do in Indonesia? Uh. I think it's more more like the same. Depend of uh, the the kind of the stenosis we see, and how long uh, the tuberculosis treatment has been given, or is just treated, or is delayed. Uh, that that depends a lot of things. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, so. When do you, how long do you have uh, anti tuberculosis therapy on before you uh, offer uh, uh, logical uh, intervention for trachea bronchial stenosis? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think uh, before intervening, how long you are going to give the medical treatment before oh, intervening? How, how long? Uh, if the patient in severe uh, uh, dyspnea, we do right away, right away the procedure of the intervention, but along with the tuberculosis treatment and LABAX, inhaled LABAX. The Indian guidelines says the patient sh should complete at least the intensive phase because when the, the sputum is passed away, it is a basically the case, yeah. it will be risk for the operator as well as the patient also. So what you see is till it completes the intensive phase, we wait. Once the smear is converted, would you go yeah. with the intervention? But in the patient with the uh, respiratory distress, we cannot wait uh, until uh, the conversion of the anti -tubular. Of course, emergency yes. you can't. Yes. Yes. Emergency. yes. One more question, sir. That will be the last question. Yes. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Great cases. So you have told uh, corticosteroids have a uh, there is a doubtful role about these steroids in tracheobronchial stenosis. I want to know from your experience, uh, do you usually prefer giving either nebulized or oral corticosteroids to these patients? Uh, yes, inhaled uh, LABA and inhaled corticosteroids because in the LABA there is a component of the anti-inflammatory effects for the uh, patient like uh, in the slides because uh, it, it was hypothesized that is th2 like immunity that take over in the endobranchial stenosis so you give them as a routine uh, for on a routine follow up for these patients yes in the patient with the endobranchial tb along with uh, anti tuberculosis treatment uh, I've been going through uh, a concept of nebulized uh, anti-tuberculous drugs being given as a dry powder inhalers. So any comment on that so in future we can expect such kind of treatment for? Yes, it, it still needs a further study, I think. Uh, maybe in, in, uh, we need uh, co to complete a national registry uh, to see whether it uh, giving anti-inflammatory uh, drugs uh, really give the patient uh, any difference. Uh, thank you, uh, Vajud. That was a very good presentation.